Amen, somebody. Amen. Amen. I thank God just for being multifaceted. Amen. Despite, amen, not having someone consistently. I just thank God, even for Brother Treshawn that tries to assist. Amen. I just thank God for it. Each and every one of you. Dear Heavenly Father, we just say thank you for just another day, for how you have blessed us and how you have kept us. Lord, we just ask you that you may continue just to strengthen us, lead us, guide us, and direct us. And Lord, we just ask you right now that I may decrease, that you may increase. Lord, we just say thank you for our ups, our downs, our trials, and our tribulations. We say thank you for every straight path, every rough path, because all paths refine us, they mold us, they make us, they help us to develop to what we ought to be. And Lord, help us to die daily to our own selves and to line up with your will. Allow your will to be done in our lives. And these things we ask as humbly as we know how. In the mighty name of Jesus we pray. And let the people of God say, Amen. Amen. If somebody will, will give me some water. Amen. Some water. Amen. Yes. If you will, grab your Bibles. We're going to the book of Matthew, chapter 13. Amen. Matthew, chapter 13. Amen. This has, I was in between three and four different things, and I found a place to park spiritually in Matthew 13. Amen. And I may have some other scriptures that complement this one. And it reads, starting at verse is number 19. Amen. I'm reading out of the New King James here. Amen. I got a large print. Thank you, Sister Gloria. Amen. So I can see this quite well. And it says in Matthew 13, 19, and it says, When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, then the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is he who receives seed by the wayside, but he who received the seed on stony places. This is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures only for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arise because of the word, immediately he stumbles. Now he who receives seed among the thorns is he who hears the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of the riches chokes out the word and he becomes unfruitful. But he who receives seed on good ground is he who hears the word and understanding it, who indeed bears fruit and produces some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, and some thirtyfold. The word of God for the people of God. Somebody said it will be a cultivated heart. A cultivated heart. Heart. Here we see where there's different types of soil. From the perspective of how one soil is and how another soil is, but the seed remains the same. And those that understand the word of God, words are seed. Because how? Why? Because they, they create something. And I know sometimes people like to say death and life this is the power of the tongue. And, and, and sometimes people mean that literally to the, to the aspect that all you got to do is speak it and say it and it just happens. But I beg to differ because it doesn't always happen that particular way. 
What the scripture referred to when it said life and death and the power of the tongue, it was referring to negative and positive talk, the receptor of, of what you receive. And that's why I tell people that we, we you have to guard your heart. As Proverbs 4.23 says, it said, with all due diligence, guard it, because from it, it, it flows something. And what does it flow? The issues of life. So therefore, the seeds that are sown is up to us to either allow ourselves to receive it or reject it. So it's up to the individual that the things that we receive internally. And, and, and that's why David said in Psalms 119, thy word have I hid. In other words, when he was speaking to, he was speaking from the, the, the fact that he was internalizing the word of God. Not saying just because he internalized the word of God that caused him not to deviate from the plan of God. That caused him not to do some things that would displease God. No. But what it did was that even when David was in his triumphs, he honored God. Because most of the Psalms, almost half of the Psalms, are accredited or attributed to David. So we see that David, he, he loved God so much that he was regarded as a man after God's own heart. So even in David's failures, I never forget, and I believe it's First Chronicles chapter 21, where the Bible says that Satan stood up against David and caused him to number the men, the fighting men, and with something that God didn't want him to do a personal senses because he didn't want David to feel internally that to a degree it was all about him and about the things that he was accomplishing upon his own merit or his own power but he wanted David to truly understand even though you got the numbers, even though you got the kingdom, even though you got the money even though you got the wealth, even though you got the accomplishments but I want you to rely and depend on and completely understand that it's me that has given you victory time and time again. So saying that to say this, that we, we, we see here in the text, if we go back to verse 21, it says, yet he has no root where? In himself, but endures only for a while. This is the superficial believer. This is the one only believes when things are good. This is the one that only believes when we're not in a pandemic. This is the one that only believes when things are going well, when things look good, when things are in this, what we would call proper place, so to speak. But this is not the one that will endure to the end. This is not the one that will, will continue on. And that's what John was saying in, in chapter 8, verses 31. He was telling those believing Jews, he said, if you continue in my word. See, a continuous is an ongoing. It's not just a one-time act. It's not just a one-time study. It's not just a one-time meditation. This has to be a daily manner of living. And that's why the scriptures say, if we walk according to the spirit, we will not be fulfilled the lust of the flesh. So in other words, the lust of the flesh still dwell in the flesh, but if we walk more according to the spirit, we won't yield to what the things that the fleshly still desires. Why? Because the flesh is unredeemed, but the spirit, the soul, has been redeemed. We have been what? Washed and cleansed with the blood of Jesus, but the flesh is still unredeemed, and that's why we still have to contend with the flesh and the things the flesh desires. The only way that you will stop contending with the flesh is when you give up the ghost. That's right. uh, 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 Proverbs 16, 25 says this, There is a way that seems right unto men, but the end therefore, therefore are the ways of death. There is a way, there is a path, there is a course of life, there is a direction, there, there is a, a focus, there a way that seems right. And, and sometimes it's, it's hard for other people to come to grips with God because they're still wrestling with the basis and the elementary things of God. But when you are truly saved and you're sanctified and you're filled with the Holy Ghost, I truly believe that the power of God bring about change. How? How you know that? 
preacher, I'm so glad you asked. Because if you read in Acts chapter 17, the Bible said when Paul came to this Berean congregation, the Bible said that it was more fair minded than the Jews. But not only that, the Bible said they received the word with all readiness and eagerness. And after the fact that Paul had ministered, the Bible said that they went back and searched the scriptures to see if those things was written in them. I come out here to tell you that when God penetrates your heart, when God brings about change, it changes something not on the exterior, but it changes something on the interior. That's where the heart is cultivated. That's where the soul is ready to receive. And when the soul receives seed, that's where the seed dies and produce something. What does it produce? A transformed life. That's why we can go to Galatians chapter 5 and see what? The fruits of the Spirit. Amen. Because a cultivated heart produce something. Yeah. The condition of your heart is critical in your walk with God. The condition, all conditions may not be the right condition. It may not be a conducive condition. It may not be a comfortable condition. And we've been dealing with COVID now. And let me say, let me, let me just say the record straight, even with COVID. God allowed, God sent COVID to come. Why? Because there was so much going on in the camp. It was so much happening in our government, in our country, in, in, in the entire world that God brought about a great shaking. Yeah. Thank you. A great shaking. Yeah. Not just in America. Not just in, 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 in Haiti and Jamaica, but over the entire globe. As you can see, so many things are changing. And, and you got some people, uh, they will go to work with no problem, but they will say, well, I don't want to go to church because they say we're supposed to be six feet apart and the doors are closed and we're in the closed atmosphere. And But then again, you'll get in other closed atmosphere and try to justify the reason why you're there or justify the reason why you go. And that's not a punchline to get you to come to church because if you got the same thing at your job, you got the same thing at the gas pump, you got the same thing standing in 7-Eleven with somebody clearly standing behind you with no mask because they feel like they constitutional right from your health, but you got to have the same faith. That's right. Somebody say the same faith. Same faith. Faith was not something you cut on the cut off. Faith was not something you have today and then, then, then negotiate tomorrow. No, the same faith. The same faith that Hebrew was used in the fire and burning was the same faith that you used in the light of dead. It was the same faith that Peter stepped out of the promise in the boat when Jesus said, he said, come after people. Peter said, if it's you, bid me to come. It was the same faith. It was the same faith that Paul, when the ship had got shipwrecked in chapter 29 of Acts, 27 of Acts, when he had told them and warned them about a storm that was going to come, which was you rocking them, and the storm still came. But God had told Paul that he was still going to Rome. And even though the storm came, even though the ship broke, and Paul, being an apostle, a man of God, he said, except ye abide in the ship, you will not make it. Some things broke up, some things happened, but yet it's still those that abide in the ship will make it. But it requires yeah. the same yeah. faith. Yeah. Yeah. And here, the Bible describes the wicked one. And we know who the wicked one. The wicked one means Satan or adversary. The gospel never penetrates these souls. Why? So it disappears from the surface of their understanding. And, and, and sometimes it disappears so fast. Why? Because they let the Satan come in and just snatch everything away. See, that's why we were saying even in Christian education, I heard a sister Tucker was saying she, she run into some people that quote scripture. Yes. And they sound good, and they sound a student, they sound like they're on the Jesus bandwagon on the same side of the Lord. But when you start living, listening to them talking, how they living and how they talking and how they living is different. They the fact how they talking, they talking one way on this and they talking one way on that, but at the same time, they're not producing anything. The Bible even called them wells without water, spots and blemishes at your love feast. They talk faith, but they don't walk by faith. The, big difference. the word, the kingdom means the message 
of how one entered the kingdom of God, or better yet, the rulership, the spirit of God. Yeah. Verse 22, it says this, Now he who receives seed among the thorns is he who hears the word, and the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches choke them out. See, it's the things that we get so interwoven with. That causes us the cares, the riches, the I got to get this and I got to have that and the man got to be this way and this got to be. A, a, a lot of people miss a lot of things yeah. because we spend a lot of time trying to formulate it and, 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 and cultivate it to what we want it to be. And then when it don't turn out the way that we really want it to be, and verse instead of consulting God first on how do I endeavor to do this thing that I'm trying to come to them, trying to get done, but then we want to do it our way. Then we want to sit in the pity party, and then we want to complain continuously instead of saying, Lord, which direction do you want me to go on this thing? Lord, how do you want me to handle this situation? And stop consulting people and start consulting God and I truly believe when you consult the right person God will already be put it in your spirit yes. Yes. That's real. repentance yes. is only a possibility through a change of heart a person must come to the light in order to see what he has hidden and sometimes the hidden things are hard to look at why because they're All right. hidden All right. that's what Jesus said you honor me with your mouth, with your heart, you enemy, your self-judging faculty is far from me. Yes, you say me love it, but you never do anything sacrificial. Yes, you say me love it, but every time I ask you for something, it's always an excuse. I'm tired, my back hurt, my feet hurt, I ain't got much money, I need to do this, I gotta go there, I ain't got time to pray, I'm trying to watch my son play football, but yet and still, you want to beg God for a house, and you don't want to give him 10 minutes. The Christian life requires something of a saint. It ain't just something that we just can ride rough shot through. It ain't something that we can just take a cruise line through. No, you're going to have some ups. You're going to have some downs. You don't even have to claim it. It's going to happen. How do you know it's going to happen? 2 Timothy 3.12. They that shall live godly shall suffer persecution. Oh, you're going to deal with some things regardless. You I, I, I've experienced uh, going through some things coming right out of prayer. Oh, Anybody else a witness? Woo! You were reading your Bible, getting closer to God, going and you were good and you were eating on the word of God and boom, here comes something at you. And it ain't always at work. Wow. Sometimes it'll be you at the grocery store. Minding your own business. And here they come in the store Violating every policy, got the dog, and you know good and well he ain't no seeing our dog, he ain't no serving dog, but yet and still they done learned, they done manipulated and learned the system so much that the things of the world and how the systems of the world that they done adopted the ways of the world, so they put a dog thing over the dog to justify them having a dog in the grocery store, and I don't understand how can a dog you carry be a service dog? You carry the animal. And how, what kind of service is he doing in your favor? He ain't saying, no, nah, get the no salt green beans. He ain't telling you to get the no low sodium corn. Or no, nah, we don't want cream style corn today. He ain't saying, no, nah, get the low fat pill. He ain't telling you nothing because the dog don't be able to respond like the human being. They're not on the same level. I don't care what people say. Yeah. Verse 21, Mark 7, 20 through 23, and it says this. For from within, out of the heart of man. So you want to know where a lot of things come from? Let's look at this text. Mark 7, 20, 21 through 23, and it says this. This is going to answer a question that a lot of people are asking. Why this? Why that? Why this? Listen to this. From within, from well, from within, out of the heart of man comes what? Evil thoughts. Sexual immorality, thief, murder, adultery, covenant, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, foolishness, 
Jesus. All these evil things does what? Come from within. I wonder how do they get there? From within. Wow. Either you serve God or you serve Satan. Either you're a slave or bond serving to God or you're a slave to Satan. It's either one or the other. So that's why a lot of things, the more I grow in God, the more I understand the scripture, the more I study and meditate, that's the less questions I ask. So when I see someone, I say, oh, they're going to more proof. Why? Because they're from within. That's what the scripture says. I got to stick with the word of God. It says, covenant, wickedness, deceit. You want to know what that deceitful spirit comes from? It's coming from within. And all of that, adultery. I wonder how did he end up this within. It's what you filled up with. That's why Romans 12. It says, be ye transformed. The word transform is the English word when we get the word metamorphosis. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's why in Romans chapter 1, when he said he gave them over to the base of mind, and in, in, in the Egypt time, in the time of Israel, they would write an A on a brick, which means a compromise, which means useless. So they had got to a point with God. God just gave them over to their own veil of affection. And I'm sorry to tell you to some degree, but I got to tell you because I love you, and I love God, and I love God's word. Some people, there is no hope. For God has given them over. That's why some people, he even told the Pharisee, he said, You should die on what? Your sins. He told them that because they had gotten to a place that they were so far gone with God that there was no hope for them. The miracles couldn't do it, the fish and bread couldn't do it, the work and the miracles couldn't do it. They were filled up himself after Nicodemus had conformed, confirmed who he was. In John chapter 3, he said, Rabbi, no man can do these things except the Lord be with him. How much evidence and proof you need? Yeah. Luke 10 even confirmed some things. Yeah. Remember when he called the seven disciples, the, the company, the other ones, and they came back with the report saying, even devils are subject to us. Yeah. But he said, don't rejoice. Because demons are subject, and he was like, I ain't seen Satan fall like life. Yes. Don't rejoice because your name hey. is written. Hey. Then if you jump over to John 6, around verse 60, when he stopped talking about he was the bread of life in verse 30, between 25 and 35, and what he meant was he was the bread that giveth life. But the Bible says, and they walk no more with him. Yes. Now one text say, rejoice because your name is written. Then another text says, they walk no more with him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. You got some people that want to continue for a short while. Yeah. And they don't stand. That's the superficial. They can trust God for this. They try to get you to be scared for that. And you got some co-workers who won't even wear a mask for the right people around them. Oh, yeah. oh come on, somebody. Yeah. You got places you go through. So I, I know I have to trust God, especially for my occupation. I don't ask to deal with the public. I don't ask to deal with people. That's just a part of my occupation. So I had to get my mind acclimated because I still want to cut a check in the meantime. So what I did was I said, Lord, you got to keep it because I got a wife. I got a kid. I got a church member. I got a mother. I got a father that's dealing with diabetes. I got a lot of people that I'm associated with. Got but I truly believe if you can keep me on this job, I don't know who opened that door. Hello, that got the cough in their hand, and you don't need them. The other day, I went to the store and forgot sanitizer. And in my mind, I was like, oh, Jesus, like the first sanitizer station, I had my hands up on it and realized, yeah, you ain't been a while without the sanitizer in your pocket. You went here, you went there. You ain't showing no signs of COVID. See, God supersedes just your normal intellect. So I understand this. So don't, don't get me wrong now. I, I don't try to deliberately leave it, but I left it by accident. Because I want to do the possible. And I'm a firm believer of the possible. I truly believe if God give me the money, let me break it down to you. If God give you the light bill money, and if he bless you to pay your light 
bill. I don't care if you want your feet, hair, nails, or whatever, clean, birthday, crystals, I don't care what it is, take care of your responsibility. Yeah. God bless you with it. Do you know somebody living on the street yeah. will be glad to have lights, running water, and hot water? Some things we neglect and take for granted. Somebody will just to have some central air heat and they got to be battling these inclement weather conditions. One day it was cold last week, then it was hot, then you can walk right in your house and you want to neglect your responsibility. Why? Because you need something else more important than what you ought to be All taking right. care of. Alright. Now come back. It's a blessing. Yes, it is. It's a blessing. Yes. But I ran out the house Deacon Mark without my sanitizer. And I, I started to get a little nervous. <laughs> That's the human side. Yeah. I don't want COVID. I, I believe God, but I still don't want COVID. Yeah, right. Some people say it's 2%. I know what I went to the miss. How you know? Have you had it? Do, how you know it's a 2% death chance? Have you had it? No, I'm talking about have you had the full effects of it? I ain't talking about, <laughs> I'm talking about when you were down and couldn't breathe and you needed a ventilator, couldn't have swallow, you were sick as a dog. Did you really have COVID? Or oh, God did allow you to get a little glimpse of it? Don't tempt the Lord thy God. That's what Jesus told Satan. When Satan tried to get him to cast himself down for the pillow, he said, We ought not to tempt the Lord thy God. I ain't gonna sit there and drink poison tomorrow. I'm gonna preach, I'm gonna believe God. And all I made is different. The scripture was saying, if basically if somebody tried to do something to your fool or to something to you that unknowingly that you didn't know. Because there's some things that people have done that they can testify that they've done to their food, they've done to their they hair, they've done to their car, they've tried to work root. See, I don't worry about all that stuff. Don't speak that over my life. I can care less what you speak because whatever is written in heaven about David the Lord and it's going to be so with you or without you. out of a man. All these things, we, we still in, in, in Mark chapter 7, all these things proceed from within, and we understand that. And then the foul person, what does the foul mean? I'm so glad you asked. A person the foul heart is expressed in what? Both ways. What he says or she says or what he or she or does. A defiled heart, a depleted, a depleted or a diluted or polluted heart. But watch this. Our secular culture, listen to this very carefully. Our secular culture encourages us to follow after our hearts or that sometimes we need to get away to seek the truth in our hearts. What? No, we don't want to do that. However, this is not good advice because our hearts can easily deceive us. Instead of following and trusting in our hearts, we should trust in the Lord and follow Him continuously. Live your best life now. I beg to differ. Because ain't nothing in this life can compare to eternal life. Come on, somebody. Some of the things we, we have to worry about, some of the conditions and the circumstances we have to worry about. And as a child, I, I battled with headaches and I kind of explained it to my wife a little bit. And, and now my son, he, he battled with headaches and we done took him to the doctor and we done did what we could do from a parental perspective. And I done prayed and prayed and prayed. But guess what? God is still keeping him with a migraine headache because somebody this morning, right now, laying in the bed, can't get up and struggling with a headache. That God is God. Still it. You can't tell me the God I serve ain't real. But it hits you from within. And the Bible says, and it defiles. And they will tell you, live your best life, girl, do whatever you feel. Don't you tell me to do that. Because you don't know what I'm thinking in my mind at the moment. That's you say that. That's right. And, and that's why it takes the Holy Spirit for us not to yield to the flesh. Because the flesh say, you heard what they said about you? Now, 10 years ago, you would have slapped them. Don't think your flesh don't still talk to you. 20 years ago, you would have punched a dead in the mouth. 30 years ago, I chopped that joke off. But now it's going to say, God bless you, God keep you. I'm going to be praying for you. But you really want to be saying, I, girl, I, you don't even know. Wait a minute up in this mug. I slap. <laughs> Yeah. 
Thank you back to the text, y'all. I got caught up just a little bit. But some people teach these things are going in the mind. There's a lot of things going in the mind. The mind, and, and, and we thank God for the Holy Spirit because it's like a menu. We, we bypass what we would have said. See, we ain't forgot how to cuss, we just choose not to. You ain't forgot. Girl, I, I'm so saved, I don't forget. I mean, Jesus zapped me. You know, we just choose to. Because the, you're walking by the Spirit and not by the flesh. And that's why when somebody wronged you at the job or wherever it was, that you turned your you ain't turned cheek, you to turn yourself. Because you knew you wanted to be employed the next day. Yes, yes, yes. As wrong as it was. And that's what the enemy does. He don't fight you from without. See, everybody looks for the battle to come by bullets, knives. The greatest weapons the enemy uses within. Do you know more crime is committed with a pen and boardroom meetings and coffee pots and paperwork and printers and, and come on somebody in three-piece suits? Both crimes are committed behind closed doors. than crimes that they want to post on TV with somebody running with a gun or a knife or some rapist. Some people have been more molested and raped with a pen than they have been done by some man or some woman. The problem is they ain't been caught. That's right. Because see, everybody is still sitting at the same table. But then there'd be a domino effect. We see it on the news and there'd be another domino effect. And this one get to go to jail and this one pardon, this one for, for committing crime and this one pardon. And then he let that one stay in jail and this one do this. And they know they're red-handed and caught. Okay. And a few years later, there ain't nothing said about it. But you do something. And man, they will remind you every time you did it. I don't care if it was 20 years, 30 years ago. And that's why we got to remind people where we are now. Yes, that was then. That was my past. That's why I'm not too fond of resume. It's because a resume only speaks to the past. Tell me something about the present. Are you a murderer? Are you a rapist now? Say Yes. That's what James was talking about in James chapter 5 when he was addressing the rich. He said, I've heard the cries of the reapers and how you have robbed them and have murdered them. Murder meant that they had robbed them in the judicial and court system with their money. Do you know so, so many people are being robbed and raped and unslaughtered in the court system because they don't have enough money to fight the unjust system. And that's why we have to rely on God. And that's why when Jesus was presented, Pilate, he didn't say he was a man after God's own heart. He wasn't say he was a Sunday school teacher. He wasn't a scholar. He wasn't a Pharisee of the Pharisee. He wasn't a Sadducee. He wasn't, he wasn't none of that. But he was an official. But one thing he knew within himself, he said, this man, no, I wash my hands with this man. <laughs> See, there's some people, even though they may be sitting in some seats, and that's why I tell people some jobs I can't take. Why? Because I, I, I'll probably be assassinated. Why? Because of the mere fact of what I stand for, what my principles is, what my morals is, and what my characters is, and I'm not going to be going in a boardroom, meeting, just signing off anything, saying, well, we got to give something. No, we don't. That's real. <laughs> Because then we give them something, we change the trajectory of what something's supposed to look like. We change the trajectory of marriage, then we change the trajectory of this, and then we change the trajectory of that, then all of a sudden we got nothing but trying to control confusion with medicine. Hebrews 10, 22, 10, 22, I'm ready to go. Let us draw near with a true heart, in full assurance of faith, with our heart sprinkled and cleansed. How do the heart get sprinkled and cleansed? It's by the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. Clean from what? A evil conscience, and our bodies washed with a pure water. So the washing of the Word, the washing of the Holy Spirit, as they come together and they consummate inside of you, they produce something. Like a woman produces a baby after the fact that the man and the woman gets together, then all of a sudden a baby is brought forth. The same thing with the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. Why? Because they connect with why. Why? Because the Bible says they are one. And when the Spirit and the Word connects, it produces something. But you got to be willing 
That's what we read earlier with the swords. You got to be, have a receptive heart. You can't have a stony heart. You can't have a heart with rocks in it. Why? Because there come a point where you believe for a while, and all of a sudden you don't believe no more. All of a sudden you respond for a while, and all of a sudden now, as soon as things happen, it's amazing how people will say, well, you know, I'm not going to church because I'm going through something right now. But you'll find them in the grocery store. You'll find them on the job. You'll find them at the doctor's office. You'll find them everywhere except for the house of God, where a place will be of healing and serenity and deliverance. But you won't come to the place of healing, deliverance, and serenity. But you will go to everywhere else while you're going through something. And that's why the more we allow God to work within us, it'll help us to do the right thing. It'll even help some of us to pay our bills the way we ought to do it. Don't neglect your, I don't know why I'm dealing with responsibility, but don't neglect your responsibility because somebody would love to have what you have. And I learned to be appreciative of what I have, but I also learned to reach for what I can obtain as well. I want to know all the options. Don't just tell me to be content. I know how to be content, and I know my value. I know the things I possess. I didn't put it in me. God put it in me. So I'm going to apply myself. It's just like going to work. I expect a check. I don't expect excuses. Why? Because I deliver something. And God is the same way. If you go to the tank, he said, if you're hard and diligent to the voice of the Lord. Yeah. That's what he was telling the children of Israel as they were getting ready to enter the promised land. Deuteronomy 28, if you hearken and diligent to the voice of the Lord. Blessings. He told stuff all week. I've been busy. I'm tired. I deserve. I this. I that. No, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. Because the Bible says there's going to come a time where you can't buy a sell trade. See, that won't allow this stuff to get me so far down that I got to work out. I got to work out. girl, I got No. My wife will tell you, I got some shows so bad that it's a shame. I mean, I watch, don't get me wrong, I'm not, I'm not so spiritual that I, I can't watch TV and enjoy a movie, because I do like movies, I like scary movies, you're like, ooh, really, probably, yeah, I do, but at the same time, I don't allow this stuff, this stuff, clothes, shoes, jewelry, do you know how stuff, and it will grab a hold of you, and you can't live out like where God wants you to be. You can't be evangelistic. Everybody think evangelistic is only by going from door to door. You got some people that you talk on the phone that you can evangelize to. You ain't got to come to their house. You can bless with a phone, a text message, an Instagram account, a Facebook account. You got all these accounts and won't be a factor for the kingdom. Say, but you want, girl, we're going to pray for y'all and y'all going out there witnessing. And no, you ought to be witnessing too. If you get out of witness protection, you can talk to somebody. Amen. But it's all is brought about by cultivated heart. Yes. There must be a change of heart. See, we have to be light and soul. And not just trying to badger people. And I, it's sad when I see people, I call them browbeating or just, just throwing this, just, just, you know, hitting them across the head with the Bible. Allow your life yes. affect them. Now, I think they made up their mind because you'll know after a while because Jesus did and he told the disciples. What did he tell them? I'm so glad you asked. He said, as you enter the city, go back and read the text. In every one, every house that you enter that does not receive the word, shake the very dust off your feet. So you, he, 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 the, the God, the Spirit, will teach you and show you how long you need to deal with an individual. 
And he'll show you who's rejected and who's receptive. And those that are rejected, you pray for them, God bless you, but there's other sheep that's not in this fold. There are two also who I must witness to. That's right. And that's what God wants us to be. In order to be effective in the kingdom work, first you gotta know what the kingdom principles is. And to know what the kingdom principles is, you gotta spend time in God's word. You have to invest in this thing. When I first started out, and I'm close, when I first started out, I, I looked at some of these books, and my, my father and, and, and El Shorter, amen, God bless both of them. And when I started out, I looked at some of this stuff, I said, man, that's a hundred dollars for a Bible? I want to spend a hundred dollars on a book. Well, that's a Bible, that's crazy, that's too much. I mean, you didn't take all that to know who Jesus is? hundred dollars? hundred dollars? Then you look at your shoes. And realize you got on a hundred and twenty-five dollar pair of Jordans that only really worth one percent of what you paid for. Yeah, that one worth one percent. Yeah, remember years ago they had the sign "We buy gold." They ain't never say "We buy Jordans." We buy purses. We buy Kimiche. We buy True Religion. We buy you know all the stuff that you deem is fashion and expensive and, and elegant and prestige. But the sign did say "We buy gold." Because they know gold is a natural resource. Yeah. And the more you invest in your walk with God, the more you'll get out of your walk with God. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I said years ago, and it's, it's not harsh, but it's true. The preacher told me if you get a cheap Bible, that's all you're going to get out of it. And I said, wow, he called the word cheap. No, he didn't call the word cheap. But what he was saying was, if you, did you struggle with the small print because you, you're too cheap to buy something that's legible enough for you to read it? <laughs> He was calling the word cheap. He was just calling, okay, if you don't go to Dollar Tree and get a Bible, that way you get the headache trying to read it. Because the words are too little. Yeah. If you save them like you save for the clothes, then save them like you save for some other stuff that you deem important, you'll be able to get some out of something. Yeah. Right. Bypass the Bible books the ground. I'm going to go in there. I ain't buying them for the church. For the church? You need to go in there for you. You are the church. Yeah. A cultivated heart. Dear Heavenly Father, we just say thank you for you being the pot and we being the clay. Continue to mold us and shape us. Help us to be what we were yesterday and help us to be what we ought to be tomorrow. Lord, we just say thank you for every moment. Thank you for being God. We know we're not even worthy children at times. Thank you for loving us at times when we really don't even deserve your love. So Lord, we just ask you that you may continue that we may not be interwoven with religiosity, but with relationship. That we may continue to grow therefore by your word. That we may stay yoked together, knit together in love and unity as those that are part of the body of Christ. And Lord, we just say thank you for the bitter and for the sweet. We say thank you for the rain and the sunshine. And these things are asked as humbly as I know how. In the mighty name of Jesus. And let the people of God say, Amen. Amen.